Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. It was, I wanted to write a little story similar to The Little Prince. I really love that book. It's so wise and beautiful and poetic and contains so many beautiful, true ideas without being really heavy handed. And because that's one of my, that's one of my issues. I, I'm so passionate about the truth and things that are true in a way where you hold it and you know the truth of it, you know the beauty and the love of it, you know that it makes you bigger, it makes you grow, it gives freedom to you, it gives freedom to others. Like that is what truth is about. And I'm so passionate about that. And because of that, sometimes when I start talking about it, I can get like a pr kind, kind of clumsy and clunky and heavy handed and just um, just not very elegant in the way that I'm delivering these things. So I thought, oh, well, there's this like little idea that I would like to write into a beautiful little story. It'll be just like The Little Prince, one of my favorite little books. And but anyway, I thought, actually, I'm just going to talk about this idea as it is instead of creating this little thing because that is the thing about the creative process you can come up with a million different ideas on different things you would like to make and you can start envisioning things and dreaming up these little projects but the most important thing about the creative process sometimes is just having a go and getting to work and, and just making stuff instead of instead of saying what it is you are going to make. Sometimes it's a lot more important to just make stuff. That's what I find for me anyway, because I have so many of these ideas and 99% of them never come to realization because they are, uh, because there are a myriad of possibilities for each idea and and then you can just get lost kind of going through all the little tunnels and little ways that things can go so anyway this is the idea you're gonna have to imagine it yourself in a beautiful little story so yeah i was going to write a little story about um <laughs> about a very a very handsome I was going to make him a very handsome young man, handsome in all the conventional and primal senses of the word, embodying characteristics that would suggest that he would be very good at fending off predators and building shelter and uh, and staying alive and being healthy, you know, the things that people associate with these things, whether they know it or not, like glossy, glossy, strong hair and glowing, clear skin and well-developed physique and muscles and broad shoulders and height and all these things that sort of imply strength and health and the ability to survive so yeah there's there's this young man he's got all these characteristics in other words uh he, he's what society defines as like really hot he is what you will see in the movies i don't know brad pitt uh he seem brad pitt seems to be the sort of uh the archetype of this kind of thing um so there exists this man uh, let's call him Bart and Bart is very beautiful looking and he but he's kind of peculiar um, in a few ways some people love him some people hate him he's got a girlfriend let's say girlfriend I could have said boyfriend uh, though we live in a heteronormative society where the the sort of assumed thing is that if he has anything at all it would be a girlfriend but I'm not saying girlfriend just because I am blindly buying into you know 
whatever. I'm just saying it because I need to pick something and that's the story. So, okay, he's got this girlfriend who adores him and he treats her terribly. Like he is really, he says things to her. Um, he takes delight. He takes real delight in saying things to her that really bring her down. And, or he tries to bring her down. He tries to belittle her. He criticizes and judges her. He, if, Ever she's taking pleasure in something he will point something out to her that uh, uh, that is a judgment about her and she will not be able to take full pleasure in whatever it is anymore so he does this all the time um, but she adores him she thinks he is absolutely gorgeous she thinks what a lucky girl I am to be with this amazing beautiful man um, but in a weird way, and so he he's with her, makes tries to make her feel small constantly, but in a weird way, like he is actually obsessed with this other girl, and she can't stand him because she doesn't like the way he treats people, and she actually finds him not just unattractive but hideous. She she finds him absolutely hideous, and this girl that he is obsessed with. She hangs out with this um, this frail uh, little old guy who is um, very, you know, very deformed, has suffered lots of tragedy in his life in certain ways, like traumatic incidents, and uh, and he is marked physically by it. Um, he was in a massive fire. His um, his his skin looks different as a result. He's, he bears these scars and people often look at him and recoil in disgust. But she loves this man because he always has time to be with anyone who is suffering or anyone who is in need. And he is often the only one who will be there to listen, to understand and accept people who are like that. And, and this girl, she just loves hanging out with this man she and she loves hearing him being with him and she finds him really beautiful so anyway this is kind of the premise of the story except you know maybe not maybe in this work of fiction it wouldn't be so everything wouldn't be so I don't know obvious in a way uh, and I would try to make it not super cliche there would be some interesting things and maybe some funny little things as well um, but anyway, I was telling this story to my little boy because I often make up stories for him. I'm like, I'm going to tell you a story. And he always goes, is this a real story? Is it true? And I always say, yeah, it's true because, uh, because truth, truth resides anywhere where love is alive. And so these stories that I put together that are that are breathed through love. Of course, they're true. I tell my little boy they're true. So anyway, um, I was telling him about this and I said to him, isn't it funny? Like, um, isn't it funny? So there's this one man that some people think he's really, really beautiful, but, um, and including his own girlfriend, his girlfriend thinks he's really beautiful. But this other girl that, uh, that he's obsessed with, she thinks he's hideous. She thinks he's really ugly. And then there's this other, this other little man who, um, everybody walks by. A lot of people think he is really ugly. And, and this girl, she thinks he's really beautiful. And I was like, where does beauty come from? I like to ask my boy these sorts of things because he's only seven. And I've been doing this ever since he was able to talk. Like I've been, uh, I've been basically indoctrinating him with my values. We all do it. If you look after, if you look after, uh, if you have the privilege of taking care of a young person, a child, or a baby, or whatever, you're going to be doing this, whether you're trying to do it or not, whether it's intentional or not. In my case, it's pretty <laughs> intentional. I'm like trying to pass on things that I hope will serve him in the future that will give him strength, 
help him to be himself, help him to find the and choose the best parts of who he is uh, from moment to moment in a way where he can really experience life and really exercise his his abilities and strengths and skills and his personhood. So I do this quite deliberately. And anyway, I asked him, why is it that the same person can be really beautiful to loads of people and not beautiful to others? Whereas, yeah, why is it? You know, is that person beautiful or is that person not beautiful? Where does beauty come from? And, uh, and he was like, and uh, he always really surprises me. He says, does it come from love? And I actually was trying to get an idea planted in his mind. And, and that was kind of the idea. He often hits the nail sort of bang on. But the way I phrased it and framed it was that beauty comes from a loving heart. Beauty comes from a loving heart. And so whether someone is beautiful or not, it depends on who's perceiving them as beautiful or not. And you perceive someone as beautiful if you regard them with a loving heart. And if you regard someone not with a loving heart, then you will not perceive them as beautiful. It's simple. It's as simple as that. And so here's this little story. I reckon that some people will be hearing this and they'll be like, oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. That, like it's such a hopeful message, this idea that, um, this idea that beauty isn't defined, uh, kind of objective or defined or set in stone. Although a lot of people actually do believe that. They do believe beauty is objective and defined which is insane but um yeah some people if you're listening to this and thinking awesome then there's hope for me and there's hope for me that someone will find me beautiful because if someone loves me then uh then yeah they'll find me beautiful if they so it doesn't matter that i'm not beautiful people you know i'm beautiful to some people who love me if that is your response then you've kind of missed the point it's kind of an ironic response because if you go from there's hope for me even though i'm not beautiful that should surely highlight in the context of what i'm saying here if you're saying i'm not beautiful that should surely highlight the fact that you're not regarding yourself with a loving heart beauty comes from a loving heart so so here's a little thought for you and maybe like a little thing you can play around with and try and just like have a little experiment, a little play with what it means to regard yourself with a loving heart because, and you'll know, you'll know if you are regarding yourself with a loving heart because, um, because beauty comes from a loving heart. And so if as you regard yourself, you find you find yourself beautiful, then you'll know that, yeah, you're regarding yourself with a loving heart. I think that's all I've got to say for this episode. Maybe uh, one of these days I am actually going to write that story and, yeah, craft it. Maybe I'll make it into a song. Bless you.